Hello, Music Multiverse listeners. Welcome to Beyond Your Radio. Welcome to Albums from the Leaf, episode nine here in 2024. This is where we talk about great, unknown, known, interesting albums from Canada. Our panelists have brought an album apiece to share. But before we get to them is tonight the night. Tonight's the night. Hit the subscribe button. For those of you that already subscribed, let's get to the panelists. Tonight on the panel, he's always fishing above Lake Ontario for an excellent album. Let's see if he found it tonight. The Grateful Dude. She's <laughs> wandered lonely and abandoned in Canadian record store for hours upon hours upon hours. Following you. <laughs> Susie Q. And the, the man who loves... A really good tea party record, Jeff Young from Tampa, Florida, in his anger and demise of the Tampa Lightning in the playoffs. Are you over it? Uh, yeah, it took like two seconds. <laughs> <laughs> All right, everybody's good? We're great. Well, we'll let the lady go first. Thank you. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> no, 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 please. <laughs> um, okay, so I'm continuing on my journey to try and find albums that Mark has heard of before. So Good luck. this can be kind of interesting for him. On this side of the world? <laughs> well, um, I'm I'm going younger because I know, well, I don't know. He, he does find younger artists too. But anyway. It's probably good. Um, so this artist is a singer songwriter and technically was not born in Canada, but lived or lives in Canada and graduated from Ottawa University, I believe in 2023. Um, she was born, I'm gonna say it wrong because it's been a long day. Uh, is it Gabon? Mm. That's where she was born. Um, and lived, I think, in a few other places, too. But um, anyway, her name, and I'm probably going to say this wrong, too, is Anise Cardo. Anise or Anise Cardo. Okay. Um, she has been singing and writing since she was 14 years old. Um, I believe she must come from a musical family from the very minuscule bio I was able to find. Um, right now, the only thing she has out is in is uh, an EP album, uh, and you can find singles. I found her on on YouTube, actually. Um, yeah. She's growing on social media. It seems like everyone who who hears what she's doing loves what she's doing. Um, she's extremely, in my opinion, ridiculously talented, um, and hopefully she's going to continue to grow and do what she's doing. Um, something unique about her is that she sings in four different languages. Um, that's English, French, Spanish, and Portuguese. And wow. um, and in some cases, that can be like a deterrent, I think, for people and scare them away. But her music is so beautiful that you don't really even need to know what she's singing. Um, her voice and just the arrangement and the music it's really pretty. Um, I listened, obviously, to all the songs, and I enjoyed each one of them. Uh, her main influence that was mentioned was um, Ella Fitzgerald. Ah, that's what brought you around? Well, I guess. I mean, I don't know if I heard a lot of it or not, but um, definitely sounds like an old soul. Um, she was also influenced by a Portuguese guitarist named um, Joao Gilberto. Um, mm. I don't know if you've ever heard of him. Don't believe so. Um, I think I tend to I tend to be drawn to artists. I think that um, aren't just singing lyrics, but it comes from a deeper place. And with her, um, that quite possibly could be because she was born with a disease, which I'm also probably going to butcher. I think it's called arthrogryposis. Um, which is a disease that it can stunt or stop you from walking, talking, sitting, um, 
it's a muscular development type issue that she was born with, I believe. So um, she's overcome it though. Um, and obviously, because she's, yeah. she's singing. Uh, but her songs are, are like, I don't really know how to describe them. Um, her voice is very soft in some ways. It's delicate. Um, the music is, it, it's so hard. <laughs> you have to listen to it. You're going to have to listen to it is all I can okay, say. Okay, but you got to get, okay. Got to give us, like, what was the name of the EP? Does it have a name? Well, the EP is called Pink Magnolia. Pink Magnolia. But when you go, but when you go to search for it, her SEO isn't so great yet. Again, because she's, I don't think, she she has a website, but it's just the basics. Um, the, that's how new, you know, she is. But, um, you know, the songs, the song titles on the album, Colors is sung in French, I believe. Um, can't explain was English. There's que te gusta de mi, which is Spanish, I think. Colors is in French. Only, I think, of course, only heaven. Um, well, I'll come back to that. Purple room was English and Elodie was French. Now, only heaven. Um, and there's different versions of these out. She has some lives and things like that too. Her voice on this one was so different, deeper, um, more textured. And if, if that's the case, like she, she's got so much to bring. So, um, I'm excited that I found her and I, I hope people will give her a listen. Um, you know, it, it's, 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 again, I don't know. I'm trying to think there was, um, Katie Tungstall has a, a similar sound in one of her songs that I, I I heard, but I'm not that it's anything like it. But um, it's just very airy and I don't know. I don't. It's a weird word to use, I guess, but exquisite. It's, it's just a beautiful sound, and she's um she's a great talent. So uh, she um it does say um sort of like. It showcases vibrant yet relaxed soundscapes built on emotive lyrics and powerful vocals. The EP is luxurious and sparse all at once. So that's kind of unique and interesting. So yeah, I would, I would, uh, I'll be checking it out. I'm hoping that the people that watch this give her that opportunity too. It's a soulful <laughs> vocal run kind of thing, I guess, going on. I, I don't know if it's soulful. Um, <clears throat> it's not like that. It's, she's got such a different sound to her voice. The Only Heaven might hit on that a little bit more. Like I said, when I heard that, I'm like, this doesn't even sound like the same person. So I don't know, um, you know, production-wise, I don't know how, how all that goes down with an EP. But um, very yeah. interesting, in my opinion. And again, I don't be, like, scared by the different languages because... It's just very relaxing and soothing music. So, uh, so, so if anybody said it's An Ane Corto, so it's A N A I S C A R D O T. I think the I probably has the weird. Uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. But, uh, uh, but hey, do... I wish I had that in my name. That'd be more popular. We could do, yeah. we could do it that way. No. Could yeah, do it. Mark. <laughs> I leave my mark. <laughs> Mr. Young, what have thou brought to the Canadian table? Picked a soul album by Canadian singer Sebastian Bach, most, <laughs> well, most known for Skid Row. Uh, this is his fifth solo album from 2014, Give Him Hell. And so he, he just recently re released uh, a single from his new upcoming album, and I, it was pretty good. And I'm like, man, you know, I never really gave his solo career any time. Damn good. I it didn't even know he had five albums since Skid Row. I was just like, okay, Skid Row's yeah. done. I'm done. Good, fine. Whatever. And uh, so I was like, all right, let's 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 look at the most recent one, which is like 10 years ago. So this is the one I looked at. I and mean, actually, I was really surprised how good it was. Um, he's got, you know, good musicians on it. It's got good vocals, a variety of using his voice as an actual instrument. And, uh, you know, he's got like the hard, you can have the hard gravelly voice the softer side of him and they can do the still on this album he did you know more of the screams like you typically hear of skid row or motley crew and but just a, a wide variety and, and really good well done they, they took time on it um 
But yeah, I mean, other than that, it just, it just, it's just—it's a good problem. I mean, it's like I want to say there's like tw- at least twelve songs in there too, and um, there's probably only one or two I would say are like kind of throwaways that you know if they came on while you're just listening to a, a mix of your car, you might be like, oh, I'll just get that one. But most of the others, I'd probably just listen to. Uh, they're just really good. Um, so he, he's a, he's out of Peter, Peterborough, Ontario. He was actually born one of eight kids, and uh, he actually learned how to sing in church. He was discovered by Bon John Bon Jovi's parents while he was singing at a rock photographer's wedding. Oh, that's interesting. Um, yeah, wow. and uh, his dad actually was a well-noted painter. He he painted the album cover for Skid Row's um, "Slave to the Grind," and also oh, I love that album. Also painted the album cover for his first solo album, I think, which was uh, "Angel Down." And he did some inside art for like the current, this, this album I'm talking about, Give Him Hell, and, and another one, I think, uh, Some Human Race from Skid Row. Um, but what's funny about him, he's, he, he does a lot of things, like a lot of things that are just maybe he didn't realize he did. Um, some of the ones that were more notable, I, I saw that um, he actually turned, he was turned down by Slash for Velvet Revolver mm-hmm. uh, when they were looking for a lead singer because they said they sounded too much like, and Slash said it was like Skid Roses. <laughs> <laughs> so they want that, but uh, um, he was on The Masked Singer in 2003, and then 2003 to 2007, he had a recurring yeah. role on Gilmore Girls as like a band member. Yeah. Um, but one thing I, I played drummer, there, right? I think he was the drummer. I think he was. Uh, I can't remember. I think I, a, I think I'm a, I think I read it. He was like a guitarist, but I don't really remember. Oh, okay. I never watched the show. But uh, it did say what, what's funny. He uh, had one of these quote unquote super groups where. I didn't realize this. He 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 joined a band called The Last Hard Man in '96. Yeah, I had and that. So it had the guitarist from the Breeders. It had uh, guitarist Jimmy Flemian from the Frogs, and the drummer from the Smashing Pumpkins, Jimmy Chamberlain. Jimmy and Chamberlain. when they first made that album, they decided not to release it. It wasn't released until years later when somebody else mm-hmm. got a hold of it. Uh, I never heard that, but. Um, Anyway, um, all I have to say that I just thought that the, the 2014 solo, the fifth solo album that he had was really pretty good. And I was really pretty surprised. Uh, didn't really, wasn't expecting much. But I'm like, oh, let's check it out. And it just started, it just, the first two songs just rock and it just like takes you from there. So it's worth listening if you like that 80s, 90s style of rock. Yeah. Um, when when you sent that new video for to me, I'm like, oh god, this is gonna be bad. I just, so did I. That's what and I, I was did. like, so good. It went. Oh, I was like, wow. And he's got to be what sixty? Uh, he's got to be old. I don't know how old he is. Um, but anyway, when I, I so I had to look that because I thought for sure that um, the guitarist from uh, Rob Zombie was on that record, John Five. And yes, he is. Oh yeah. And Steve Stevens is on that record also playing guitar and he's famous for being one of the co-writers of the theme for top gun interesting yeah cool cool choice i you know sebastian bach he's multi-talented his vocals are crazy he was he was uh the fan of the opera too in canada for a while so on stage so he can he can he's the metal meatloaf maybe i don't know Is that, uh, yeah, he did uh he did he played jesus and Nazareth and jesus christ superstar oh did he oh okay. i could see that yeah. So Jesus is chagrin. Oh, um all right. <laughs> so we'll uh we'll go to the grateful dude. What did you what did you find north of Lake Ontario? Well, I think I found uh, in my book a gold mine. Um, hey, hey, hey. Yeah, it's just sometimes if you uh find this black nugget and you get hidden on it, it turns out to be gold. Oh so um, I did my usual thing where I took my list of 86 million uh, Canadian uh, bands that Mark sent me, and I did this, <laughs> and I came up with somebody that I've never heard of before, and then I did some, I went down a rabbit hole. So the man I am uh, I picked was Alan Doyle. And Mr. Alan Doyle, I uh, traced him back, and... My record is going to be today from a very interesting band 
called Great or Big C. Uh, wow, these guys are pretty freaking phenomenal. When I first uh, turned them on, I said, wow, this sounds just like the Bills. And it does. It has so many similarities to the Bills, from the instrument to the type of song. They Both bands play a lot of sea shanties. And yeah. there's a whole bunch of Celtic, Celtic rock in there, folk, Newfoundland uh, folk rock. Uh, the band is amazing. They really, really are. Uh, they formed in, I believe, in 98, 97 or 98. Uh, and then um, they went through a, lots of transformations, playing a, just a lot of little pubs until they gained a following. And then I guess they um, they did a couple albums. So the album in, that I'm going to do for you today um is from 2010. They split up in 2013 as a band as a whole, but they have they have uh, now and according to Mark too, they have uh, both uh, what's their names here, uh, Alan Doyle and uh, Sean McCain um, still do uh, a lot of gigs, including in Buffalo. Um, Usually as the Great Blue Sea, but uh, Great Big Sea, but they actually have other names in their solo career, but they do a lot of songs. Um, the album, which is what I want to talk about, is uh, first rate. Uh, it blew me out of the water completely. I've listened to it three and a half times till airtime today in a row. Uh, I got two songs is going in my head right now it's just it's great stuff just absolutely great stuff i love celtic rock i always have always will i've heard it in this country all over the place i've heard it in ireland um so it, it's really really uh dear to my heart and this band just i will i these guys are going to be on my my radar for some time to come i'm hoping nice. maybe for uh uh, a resurrection, possibly another tour, all those kind of things. I'd fly to Buffalo. Come out here, Alan Doyle might be playing. So who yeah, knows? I said I'd fly to Buffalo to hear these guys. So yeah. um, I was impressed. Um, they uh, have a the long album of... title. Oh wow! Well, uh, Safe upon the shore, two thousand ten. Which uh, you are no longer because you are now. Deep in the water. Yeah, no, I'm still <laughs> safe on the shore. I got 80 <laughs> feet to the left to get into the water. So, but um, it's a very good album. Um, the songwriting is superb. It may not be, I don't think Mr. Young will really like this, but, you know, I, you never know. Things, stranger things have happened. But um, um, it's very folksy, very Celtic. Uh, a lot of mandolin, um, a lot of uh, acoustic guitar, drumming is soft and subdued, um, but it's really good. For all you people out there who, who are deadheads like me will love this album. There's no question about it. This is a, a treasure. Uh, Mr. Mark, if you know of things like this in the future, buzz me up. Because this, <laughs> you knew about this, and I should have known about this. This, this was really, I was so impressed. I still am impressed. I will probably, as soon as we get out of this, I'll probably go back and continue to listen because I was, it's just great music just to sit down and sit around and hang and have a beer, you know, and uh, listen to this stuff. The, their their um, harmonies are excellent. There's a lady who sings with them now and then named Susan. Can't remember her last name. But her 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 voice just resonates that Celtic tang, you know. Um, mm -hmm. Wow, these guys are just unfreaking believable. I'm I'm seriously blown away. This is one of the best discoveries of of an album and a band since I've been on this program. Ah, well, those are big cool. accolades from from yeah, a band was, who started 
in on Rankin Street. Uh, right. Playing in that a was bar the original they, name. Yeah, a hundred dollars in a beer. That's what they play for. Yeah, that was uh, <laughs> something in a something in a thistle. Uh, the name of the pub. A rose and a thistle. Rose and a thistle was there. Yeah. For, they were doing for a hundred dollars a night and a beer. So hey. Yeah. Yeah. And but that's when they started, and they've gone through many, many band members. There's been a, a yeah. Lot there's of some them. incarnations there of people. Yeah, yeah. I mean, even Alan Doyle himself has been mentioned as a past member. You know, yeah. So, uh, but he he all he's been on all their albums. Right, right. He has been on, and he is actually the pretty much the the founding member, and he's the he's the uh, the the engine that drives the train. There's no question there. So, yeah. but no, I was, Mark, I was very impressed. Like all I can say is absolutely. So that album actually, water. I mean, they do, they do do covers. So be aware of that. And if you have never heard of them, they'll, they'll they, I think on that album, they do Gallows Pole by um, uh, the, the folk song, which yep. obviously famous by um, uh, Led Zeppelin. Um, I think their, their first song that ever got them like in the top um, uh, playlist was, was a cover as well. Uh, I don't know who by, but I, I know it was a cover. Um, they do do a lot of writing. On, on Something about album, up and down. I, I, that's I remember. Album, album. Most of the albums, it's a 14, 14 song album. Most of the stuff was written by them on this one. Yeah. And you yeah, can, but I mean, they, they throw a cover in, which is. Cool. Yeah. You can tell they're writing. It's very, very. I'm not going to. I don't like the word simple, but it's it's um to, to the point. It, it's kind of. It's what you expect. If you like sea shanties, and I happen to be very much in love with sea shanties of all all types, um, you'll you'll recognize and, and like this album. Cool. Yeah. Um, so what did you see. find, Mark? Uh, well, I I wanted to go back and and just and and think about something that I hadn't gone back to in a very 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 long time, and I know that. Uh, my wife will remember this. I think Jeff might too, because he was probably maybe around when I bought it and it was in Canada. I went up, you know, you're not going to get this in the States. Um, so this particular woman is not a household name, was not a household name in Canada um, in the legacy of Canadian solo female artists. But between the time of 1996 and 2000, she received some very strong accolades and audience in her songwriting and knack for what was happening then, which was a bit of pop folk rock and uh, the Melissa Etheridge's of the world kind of thing going on at the time. And she kind of nailed her own take on it. But she also got the attention of a certain actor, Gary Sinise, who was seen with her all over the place for some time. Now, if you don't know Gary Sinise, actor, but he's also a bass player in his own band. And apparently he was quite smitten with her and seeing her on one of they were shooting in Vancouver. And I think something with Ben Affleck and I, I couldn't think of the name mm -hmm. of the at this point, but um, somebody can chime in later on that. doesn't matter. Um, but so he got to meet her and it was and she was uh, with um, Ted Dykstra at the time. And I think they were married uh, or maybe they were going to be married. Um so he's a famous playwright in Canada, actor and, and director. So she thought maybe it was just one of his friends until she met him. And it's like, oh, my God, it's Gary Sinise. So she didn't know who Gary S. was who wanted to meet her until he showed up. Apparently, he might have bankrolled some of this, this particular album. And my album choice from 1998 is her third album in actuality, but the one that made it the most. And this is Melody Doan's Adam's Rib. Mm -hmm. And um, you say you don't know, but you will, because for some reason, she wrote one song on here that has been played in so many television series. The list is I, I shaved it a bit to not go into a great deal, but she wrote a song called I Can't Take My Eyes Off You. And that song showed up in Buffy the Vampire Slayer, That's Life, Baywatch. Resurrection Boulevard, and a whole bunch of others. She toured with Jan Arden, The Philosopher Kings, Lilith Fair, and Great Big C. Mm -hmm. So there's our connection today. 
We have connections. Yes. And Gary Sinise actually winds up playing on an album, but it is not this one. I can't remember if it was Shakespearean Fish from 96 or the one that came afterward. Uh, actually, his, his picture is on one of the inside covers of one of my albums, too. Um, but a very interesting. But the song, it's just pop folk rock. Um, now, she is no longer really doing that. She had two children. Uh, but she's still heavy in the music business in another realm. She's very famous for ukulele and children's music, and she has her own program on the CBC, uh, and she's been nominated for a many screen awards for it, apparently. She also did, for this album, did win the Juno for Best New Artist, uh, even though it was three years. So, Melanie Doan's Adam's Rib is my choice for tonight. You can find that, I'm pretty sure, on any streaming service. Um, the big songs I think were well, obviously, I can't take my eyes off of you. Waiting for the tide, happy homemaker, and um, how you cried and good gifts. Uh, highly recommend if you like those kind of a female solo artists playing guitar. Uh, good stuff, cool. I will thank the panelists again for their great picks tonight. We'll do this again in two weeks. In two weeks, that will be the final. It'll be number 10 for the year, and we will be switching a uh, new show coming. Well, we're resurrecting a show, so to speak, because we want to get back into something else. But please like and comment. Let us know what you think of these albums and uh, maybe list some Canadian favorites of yours. Check out our other programs uh, where albums for today are still going on. Don't miss panelists' favorite show this Friday. Albums from 1999, albums that are 25 years old. And then album review Saturday, we got Ghost Piss. Yeah, you don't want to miss that one. Everybody's listening to Ghost Piss. I don't know. Go beyond your radio with us, a real music appreciation channel. Until next time, happy listening. <laughs>